you ever used or even Welcome to the help section. The help section will show you And I have lived in this spot for over 400 years. 400 years is a long time. During that time I have seen amazing things. But of all the stories I could tell you, the story of Pocahontas touches me the most. The year was 1607. Two friends gathered by my side in the woods at the edge of the Chesapeake Bay. One belonged to the animal tribe, and the other was a winged one. Muskrat was the first to speak that day. Whoa! Don't sneak up on me like that. I'm Muskrat. Looking at the water's edge, I yak it up with the fish and the other water animals. Being as short-sighted as I am, I rely on what I hear to be the truth, said the rodent. Then I explained to my friends, I live my life rooted in one place, and my wisdom comes from feeling. The wind in my leaves, insects beneath my bark, skunks at my feet and sweet sap running through my veins all bring me news. Finally, Mockingbird chimed in. They say I'm flighty hopping from rock to rock and soaring above the forest. I just like to keep my distance from what goes on around me. To me, seeing is believing. And what I see <laughs> often makes me laugh. The next morning, my friends joined me again, but their chatter was different. Crab news is bad news. The words just come up river. Muskrat told us frantically. Our waters have been invaded. Nay, not invaded. I replied. The wind feels soft against my bark. And surely soft winds blow no ill. Then Mockingbird smirked. From a bird's eye view, I have seen three strange ships coming our way. What does it mean? Bad news? Soft winds? I'll wait to see which way this blows. Well... Bird's gotta do what a bird's gotta do. I have to go to where a woke moko to tell the princess about this. Oh boy. Oh boy. Pocahontas has dreamed of this day. Said Mockingbird as he flew off to find the Indian princess. Meanwhile, Pocahontas took her canoe and paddled down the river through her favorite part of the forest. As she guided her canoe through the gentle water, Mockingbird joined her. Princess! Princess! I have a surprise for you! Mockingbird said urgently. Wait till you see this! You must follow me! Mockingbird flew off and Pocahontas paddled after him down the river. Wait for me, Mockingbird! Wait for me. I cannot paddle as fast as you can flap your wings, said Pocahontas as she caught up with her eager friend. After Pocahontas had paddled down a few bends in the river, Mockingbird flew onto the shore, landed gently on a tree, and told Pocahontas to sneak up behind him. Hey, 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 hey. Come here, princess. Walk softly so that no one will hear you. Now look over there. 
he whispered. Have you ever seen canoes like those? And those pale-faced strangers? Have you ever seen them before? Why, those aren't canoes, said Pocahontas. They're floating islands. Pocahontas stood and watched with her eyes wide open in amazement as three large ships sailed into the calm Chesapeake Bay. She had never seen such enormous boats, and she had never before seen white men. She had only heard her father, Chief Powhatan, call them enemies. Still, the floating islands were a wonder to her, as were the men who rode upon them. Look, Mockingbird! Pocahontas said with excitement. Their skin is fair. They have shaggy faces. And their bodies are covered with heavy cloth. How peculiar. And wonderful. She thought. To Pocahontas, the arrival of the strangers offered a new adventure. At the very same time her father, the great chief Powhatan, stood behind the tall grass on the other side of the bay. He too watched as the English ships invaded his land. At least that is how he viewed it. Such craft had come before, bringing slave hunters and disease. Powhatan expected that the coming winter would destroy the new English settlement. If necessary, I will rid myself of the unwelcome visitors within the year, he thought. Meanwhile, on board one of the ships stood a man with his own views of this event. He was an ambitious young adventurer named Captain John Smith, hired by the Virginia Company to help establish a colony in the New World he expected to struggle, and he was up to the task. Smith spoke proudly. I have fought in foreign wars. I have seen frontiers populated by savages, speaking in strange tongues. I am quick with new languages. I have had to learn them for my own survival. Smith kept an account of his journey in a diary. We arrived in April 1607. A ruling council was elected by the settlers, and Jamestown came to be. We carved a colony out of the forest, building a fort to enclose a church, a storehouse, a marketplace, roads, and rough dwellings. Greetings, Space Warrior. Your mission is to destroy the target words described on the LCD readout below. To do this, you must use the mouse to place the laser sight over the correct word and fire the mouse button. Should you accidentally destroy any word other than the target words described below, our Starfleet will lose points, jeopardizing our command of the Zirconian Galaxy. If you would like to be more challenged, Choose level 2, and the words will become more difficult. Good luck. Target. A word that means sitting on top of water. Target. The flat green part of a plant or tree. Target, a group of people who share the same way of life. 
As the Jamestown settlement grew, Powhatan thought more and more about the English. When he became chief, he took the name of his land, Powhatan, which was also the name of his people. To him, the English were backward. Hmm. The English named this land after people instead of the other way around. They call this place Virginia after a dead queen. Hm. Powhatan laughed softly. And Jamestown is named after the one they call King James. They do not respect this land the way my people do. The English do not understand Powhatan ways. Instead, they try to change everything into what they understand. Powhatan thought aloud. I cannot change. I am a warrior. I can only meet the strangers on my terms. My favorite daughter, Pocahontas, is different. She can meet them. She will be friends with them. Pocahontas played in the forest. Her birth name, Matoka, means little snow feather. This was a private tribal name and so it was rarely used. Her public name was Pocahontas, a name that described her well it means frisky, mischievous, or playful. Pocahontas honored the old ways, but the new ways excited her as well. She went to Jamestown and offered food to the strangers and turned cartwheels in the streets. This is where she first met John Smith, who asked, who is this beautiful girl, so kind as to fill our starving stomachs with food? My name is Pocahontas. I am princess of the Powhatan people, she answered. Then may I offer a necklace of beads, befitting such a lovely princess as yourself. The captain said as he placed a string of beads around her neck. Despite her efforts to create peaceful relations between her people and the settlers, no Englishman was safe outside of the fort. In the forest at River's Edge, Muskrat said, They aren't safe inside the walls either, I hear. Famine and disease find them there. Mockingbird laughed. Bullseye. Their bright clothes make them easy targets. <laughs> Pocahontas joined us just as I spoke. How lazy some of those Englishmen are. They are still as stones. They expect others to gather their food and build their shelters. Not John Smith, said Pocahontas. He's strong and resourceful, and I am teaching him our language. Captain Smith is my friend. He gave me these beads. You're lucky he didn't give you a cuff of iron, warned Mockingbird. Don't be mean. John Smith would never make a prisoner of me, said Pocahontas. Actually, I think he's rather fond of me. Is the fondness not the other way around? Mockingbird mocked. Perhaps I'm fond of him too. But I'm not telling if it's true. Pocahontas replied.
By the end of autumn, food stores were virtually empty in the Jamestown colony. In early December, 1607, John Smith assembled a small party and ventured upriver in search of food. He was determined to get it by bargain, stealth, or force. Suddenly, a group of Indians surprised Smith's party. A fierce battle took place as bullets and arrows flew back and forth across the river. Surprised and outnumbered by the Indians, Smith's men were killed, and Smith himself was taken prisoner. Nearly a month-long journey brought him to Werewokamoko. It was the home of the great Chief Powhatan. My brother tells me that you amused him with your magic compass. We have magic makers too, said Powhatan. My priests will determine if you intend us harm. Then Powhatan gave a signal, and a man wearing a hat, decorated with stuffed snakes and weasels, performed an elaborate ritual. Smith was sentenced to death and a formal execution ceremony began. According to custom, two braves set a feast before Captain Smith. As Smith devoured his meal, two great stones were brought before Powhatan. After finishing his feast, Two strong warriors grabbed Smith, dragged him before Powhatan, and placed his head on the stones. The two warriors raised large clubs above him, ready to smash his head to pieces for the evening's entertainment. All the while, the brave captain showed no fear. The people of Werewokamoko gathered around. Pocahontas, who was among them, moved closer to see who was to die. Of all the strangers, she knew this man. On her neck she wore a chain of beads which he had given her, and she had spent her days dreaming about him. When she saw his face, she wanted to cry. Her heart and mind were in a tumult. She ran toward the prisoner just as her father gave orders to begin the execution. Father, no! Screamed Pocahontas. Please, Father. You must spare him. 
I beg you. Power Tan spoke slowly. This man is the chief of the white men, and therefore he is responsible for the death of our people. Power Tan ordered the ceremony to continue. The two warriors raised their clubs into the air and prepared once again to swing them down upon Smith's head. Unwilling to accept her father's decision, Pocahontas leapt from her place and covered John Smith with her body. The club stopped in midair. Powhatan looked surprised as his favorite daughter lay her head upon the prisoner. I will shield his life with mine, Pocahontas declared. The great chief looked down upon her and nodded. John Smith was free. Smith held Pocahontas, looked into her eyes and said, I am forever grateful to you. From this day on you shall be called non pareil one who is unequaled in all of Virginia. Pocahontas just smiled at him and felt great joy. That night, Muskrat skidded out of the water right up to my feet. Incredible! He shouted. The new year starts with peace! It's marvelous! I replied. It gives me goosebox just to think about it. The Indians and the strangers can give each other a new kind of knowledge. Unbelievable! Snapped Mockingbird skeptically. Each one wants what the other has. Mark my words, friends. Mark my words. Peace will never last. The next day, John Smith and Pocahontas went for a walk. I want to show you more of the beautiful land that surrounds us. And I want you to understand how dear this sacred land is to the Powhatan people, Pocahontas said. She took him to a quiet lake beneath a beautiful waterfall, and they swam in the cool, clear water. She taught him Powhatan words, and he taught her English. The two friends grew very close. She's in love, said Muskrat. Head over heels in love. Isn't it wonderful? Then Mockingbird added, I know what I see, and I see what I know. That girl is in love. While Pocahontas was eager to learn the ways of the English, she also wanted to show John Smith the ways of the Powhatan people. In a field near Werewokamoko, Pocahontas treated Smith and his companions to a harvest dance. Little did she know that the English would be so easily frightened. For when the performance began with shouts of celebration, the English leapt to arm themselves against 30 dancing girls. After Pocahontas calmed Smith and his men, they watched politely with expressions of pleasure and amazement. In turn, Captain Smith taught Pocahontas about his world. On warm, clear nights, the two found a peaceful place to sit under the starry sky. There, John Smith taught Pocahontas about the constellations and how he used them to navigate his ship.
While Pocahontas and Captain Smith grew close, Powhatan grew more powerful. Splashing to the shore, Muskrat brought us more news. Hey, listen to this. I hear the King of England sends a crown to the great chief Powhatan of the Powhatans. A further alliance is in the air. I just love happy endings. Then Mockingbird added, It's not the end yet. Things are still happening. Crown or no crown, we'll see how royally they all behave. Powhatan was a werowance. Uh, a what, perchance? A chief is called a werowance. Oh. <laughs> That's right. His daughter did the antler dance. Uh, uh, what, perchance? A fine and festive harvest dance. That sounds nice. He'd like to own an English manse. Uh, uh, what, perchance? A fancy house is called a manse. <laughs> King James sent him a pair of pants. A what, perchance? A suit of red, including pants. How generous. Powhatan was a werowance. All right. John Smith was an adventurer. What's that, good sir? A seeker. An adventurer, you know. Yeah, sure. I'll and with the council, he'd confer. Uh, what's that, good sir? He'd talk with others. He'd confer. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. They had the king's imprimatur. What's that, good sir? His backing. His imprimatur. Everybody knows that. Yeah, sure. Everybody. Though with it, Smith did not concur. Uh, what's that, good sir? He disagreed. He did not concur. Huh. Did not concur. John Smith was an adventurer. He sure was. Pocahontas was a pacifist. And what is this? A peacemaker. You know, a pacifist. Huh. She helped two cultures coexist. Uh, and what was this? To live together. You know, coexist. Oh, that's nice. It hurt her to see John Smith dissed. What's this diss? Looked down upon, dismissed, or dissed. Oh, diss, of course. They called her non pareil for this. Uh, what's this? Unparalleled, a peerless miss. Oh, she sure was. <laughs> Pocahontas was a pacifist. Yeah! Muskrat's news about the crown proved correct when a packet of papers from the Virginia Company was sent to the colony. The orders called for the coronation of Powhatan and they were signed by King James. For the ceremony, Powhatan was given a scarlet cloak a copper crown, a canopy bed, and other gifts befitting a king. This attention to Powhatan angered Smith, but the orders came from King James himself. Powhatan was crowned, and the colonists at Jamestown were left to deal with a proud chief, made even more proud by the copper crown on his head. By this time, Powhatan's sense of power had grown immensely, and he was beginning to think it was time to finally rid himself of the colonists. He offered Smith enough corn to feed the colony for the winter, while secretly planning to murder him. Powhatan spoke with his counselors. I am tired of supporting them while they attempt to take over our land. I have had enough with their gifts and trinkets. It is time to do something before more English arrive on our shores. Unbeknownst to Chief Powhatan, Pocahontas was listening as he spoke. If we kill Smith before he leaves Werewokomoko, surely the colony will suffer. Without their leader, the other settlers will be afraid. 
and may return to England. Without the food, still others will starve. Let it be done. Let's rid ourselves of Smith once and for all. As Smith loaded his barges with food, Pocahontas ran to him and said, You must go quickly, or my father will have you killed. Tearfully she told him, We may not see each other again. You must know that I love you. Do you not love me too? John Smith took Pocahontas into his arms and replied, I do not know how to thank you for all you have done. I love you, and I am forever grateful to you, my princess. With tears streaming down her face, Pocahontas watched John Smith's party escape. The pretended peace had ended, and Smith never saw Pocahontas on her native soil again. Pocahontas sought comfort from her friends in the forest. Sitting among us, she said, I saved John Smith's life twice, but nevertheless, he is lost to me. Then Mockingbird said sweetly, Look at a bright side. He said he loves you, and you love him too, and he's alive today because of you. Muskrat nuzzled the princess and said, Still, it's difficult to think that you may never see him again. Then I gently brushed her head with a falling golden leaf and said, Nay. They will meet again one day. I can feel it. Pocahontas smiled upon us for our kind words and said, Oh, maple tree, I think you are right. I can feel it too. I will see him again one day. The beautiful love that we shared is all around The spirit inside us won't break I see it in the way the trees blow in the wind I feel it with each step I make There's a feeling, a special feeling that I This special feeling is more real and true than any other kind of feeling I've ever known. It's a feeling, a special feeling that started in my heart and has grown. Our love was for Feeling that I have for 
This special feeling is more real and true than any other kind of feeling I've ever known. It's a feeling, a special feeling that started Jack opened his window and jumped right onto the beanstalk and began climbing up. Jack climbed so high that his house looked very tiny and people on the road below looked like ants. After walking along for a while, Jack came across some giant footprints. They were so big, Jack could hardly believe they were real. Eventually, the road led to a bridge, which crossed a bubbling blue river. As Jack began to cross the bridge, he heard a loud and terrifying hissing sound coming from below. Suddenly, a dreadful snake-like serpent raised its head and spoke. How dare you cross my bridge without my permission? For this, you must die. All those who without permission crossed pay dearly, for now their lives are lost. That night, at the princess's orders, Pee Wee was not to be allowed inside the palace. So, as the night fell, poor Pee Wee sat outside all alone. He looked up at the stars and thought, Here I am. Half of the kingdom belongs to me. And I am left to sleep outside. I defeated the devil and they still make fun of me. Then Pee-wee fell asleep, feeling lonely and unloved. A moment later, the princess and her servant came out with the witch. The witch had an evil face with a long pointy nose. She carried a small black cauldron. The witch pulled back her hand and began casting an evil spell. 